Hi, I'm Terry Misashi in the Finishing Shop. Today we have a project for finishing. It's an unfinished porch rocker. It's not even assembled, brand new out of the box. And it's going to be a challenge, both in sanding and finishing. We're going to need an arsenal of sanding tools to be able to attack all the various parts and pieces of this rocker. You're not going to be able to do much power sanding on any of these parts. As you can see, there's rounds, there's nooks, there's crannies. You might be able to power sand the rockers, but that's about it. So we're going to get to work doing the sanding and prepping to get this rocker up to stain and then ultimately to finish. Begin with 120 on the finishing block and sand every flat surface. Work from 120 to 150 to 180. It is tempting to power sand the seat, but the spinning disc would damage the slats. Use the block. Sand the flats of the arm with the block and use folded paper for the edge of the crest and the edges of the arm. The inside edges of the slats are sharp and rough sawn. Work into those cracks with folded paper. The posts and rungs need smoothing with the maroon non-woven pads. The most difficult part of the whole rocker is in between the spindles on the back. The micro zip is the only tool that will do it. The rocker is now all totally prepped. It's been sanded, it's been smoothed, defuzzed, so it's ready for stain. There's a couple of things that we have to do before we stain. This rocker is disassembled, and I left it that way on purpose because it's much easier to stain and finish before it's put together. But there's areas that I don't want stain to be on, the tenons being one of them. So we're going to tape those off, make sure those stay nice and squeaky clean so that the glue will stick to them. The other issue with this rocker is that there are parts that are poplar. This assembly is all ash. Most of your back is ash. Your top crest rail is poplar. Your rounds are poplar. The seat is poplar. Poplar is known as a treacherous wood. If you put stain on raw poplar, it will blotch horribly and it will be very, very ugly. The ash we can go ahead and stain and it will be beautiful. Let me show you. We're going to use a golden oak wiping stain, which very beautiful on things like oak and ash. Ash is very similar to oak. You're just going to flood the surface. Get it all in those areas. Wow, very nice. Very pleasant color. You can rag it on. If you need to use a brush to get into those tricky little areas, you can certainly do that. Let me just wipe that down. Pretty, very pretty. Ash and oak are very, very well-behaved woods. Now, if we were to do that to our poplar. I've got an example here of a poplar board. Let me throw some stain on here and show you what happens when you do that. That is very, very unattractive. You can see where it has just absorbed into all the contrary areas of the grain and it's left what is known as blotching. That is a term in the industry. So we're going to do a treatment on the poplar parts, on the seat and on the back crest and the rounds, and we're going to keep this from happening. All right. 
all the parts of the rocker have been stained except for the poplar pieces. As I had mentioned before, poplar is a treacherous wood and we realized by putting some stain on this piece, this test sample, that if we had done that, it would have been really bad. So, here we are. All those pieces are stained, they're drying. Now we're going to pre-treat the poplar and we're going to use Danish oil. Just a thin coat. Let me show you on this sample board. Quite simple. Just put it on. Make sure it's thoroughly wet. And then wipe the excess off. This has to dry overnight and then tomorrow we can then stain over this. With the seat, you're going to have to use a brush because we have to get in all of these cracks. And the back as well, we're going to have to oil all the spindles and this top crest, but try not to get too much on the other ash parts. Make sure you get all that oil down on either side. Work it down in. Flood the surface. And then after you've gotten through a few slats, you can stop and wipe your excess off. And then that's all we can do until tomorrow, because this oil needs to dry thoroughly. And then we can put some stain on here. So the Danish oil has dried and I've scuff sanded it, 320, nice flat board with the sanding block. You're going to have to use a combination of the non-woven pad to get in here, and then maybe the sandpaper folded to be able to sand the contours of this area in here. And then we're going to stain. We've already got the other parts stained. Now we're going to try the stain on these areas that we have pre-treated. That's already looking a whole lot better nice and clean, no uneven stain take. And then down here where I didn't treat our sample board, you can see immediately the difference. Here's where I put no Danish oil whatsoever on down here, and then this is the area that was treated. So our test sample shows that we are good to stain these areas now. Certainly easy enough to rag on the flats, but you are going to need a brush to get into all of these areas. Once this is all stained and wiped back, we'll be able to uh, let the stain dry, assemble it, and then we can top coat. The 
stains now finally dry, and now we can uh, tack this with a top coat. It's tempting with such a complicated project to go for an aerosol, and you can certainly do that. But pay attention to the method in which you're going to be spraying with an aerosol can. Do not spray really close, back it up, and then do multiple, multiple light passes, continuous passes, don't stop, start, stop. And then just keep going over the whole chair. And it's a really nice way to finish something that has all these angles and rounds and ins and outs. So, but if you decide with the aerosol to do that, remember these are thin coats and you're going to need to put on at least four to five coats. Light, light passes. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to choose a water-based product. I'm going to brush it on. And the trick with brushing on, very first, this is a semi-gloss and there's stuff in the bottom of the can. Make sure you stir and stir and stir again. You don't want any of that sheen to be still sitting on the bottom of the can. You want it mixed in thoroughly. And when you begin brushing, get your brush ready. Not a big sopping wet brush full. And start by doing thin coats quickly. Water-based finishes do dry very quickly. You want to get in and get out. Get the area covered. It's going to be tricky because you're going to have to work first this side and then this side and try to contain any drips or sags. And you're going to need patience to coat this chair really well without a lot of problems, no drips, no sags. It could take as much as half an hour, 45 minutes. So just take your time and do a good job. We've done three coats of an interior polyurethane on this. Water base goes real quick, dries in about an hour, you can scuff and then you can go right into a second coat. This is plenty durable for an interior piece of furniture. If you're planning on putting this outside, get an exterior product. Get an exterior spar varnish, could be water base. They're very nice to work with. And then put at least three to four coats on there as well. This is freshly finished, dry to the touch, but not cured. Wait five to seven days before putting it into service. And I guarantee you, when you put it in the house, it's gonna be everybody's favorite chair that they're gonna to head to. Looks beautiful. Very nice work. <laughs>